Thor Ragnarok is a huge hit with critics and audiences and sends its titular hero off on a bold new adventure that boasts long-time ramifications for him, his friends, and for Asgard. It also sets up a new three-film trilogy arc for the Hulk, who plays a major role alongside our title hero. Naturally, it leaves some plot threads dangling. With lingering questions that range from Loki's allegiance to how Ragnarok will affect the upcoming Avengers Infinity War. Many of these stories will be picked up in future Marvel films, but some are a bit more nebulous and may not be answered for quite some time, if ever. Let's take a look at some of the biggest questions left unanswered by Thor Ragnarok. It should go without saying, but brace for spoilers ahead. Is Hulk here to stay? We find out in Ragnarok's second act that Bruce Banner has been in his Hulk form for two whole years and he later describes this particular transformation as different from any other. Apparently, his consciousness has been absent all the while, with only Hulk and no banner knocking around in his mind. Hulk like fire. He's afraid that if he transforms again, he may never be able to revert back to Banner. But that doesn't stop him from transforming into Hulk again when Thor's ragtag Revengers find themselves in desperate need against Hela's forces and the giant demon Surtur. Now we're left to wonder whether we'll see Bruce Banner as we know him again. Where's Sif? Sif really dodged a bullet in Thor Ragnarok's first act by not being available to charge against Hela with her cohorts. That being said, we've got to wonder where she's at during this movie. Sif gets nary a mention throughout the entirety of Ragnarok, which is strange considering her prominence in the prior two films in the series. What? Admittedly, we know her absence is due to actress Jamie Alexander filming her TV show Blindspot, but that doesn't quite explain the decision not to mention her at all. You'd think a throwaway line explaining she was off-world might have been warranted, considering she had a couple of significant appearances in Marvel's TV series Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Has Loki turned good for good? Has the God of Mischief permanently turned over a new leaf? That might depend on whether he took the Tesseract, and leaked footage from D23 seems to indicate that he did. But at the end of Ragnarok, we see him at a tepid peace with his brother and the people of Asgard. He fights valiantly in the Battle of Ragnarok and shares a quiet, friendly moment with Thor in its aftermath seeming to confirm that he wants their relationship to heal. He even seems to support Thor taking his rightful place on the throne as King of Asgard. But as Marvel fans know all too well, nothing with Loki is as it seems. Even if his aiding Thor's cause in Ragnarok comes from a sincere place, there's a very good chance that it also serves as a stepping stone on Loki's path to retaking the throne and doing away with his brother. Where will new Asgard be? As Thor Ragnarok comes to an end, the realm of Asgard is destroyed by Surtur. Asgard was the first true foray into the cosmic side of the Marvel Universe, and has served a crucial role in the movie's world-building over the last few years. And just like that, it's gone. Fortunately, Thor and the Revengers successfully evacuate the realm's citizens, so the casualty count is low. But the film still ends with an entire population adrift in space. Something similar happened in the comics that landed Thor and all of Asgard in the middle of Oklahoma. So who knows? Maybe this is just an easy way to let Thor rule his kingdom a little closer to the Avengers' action for Infinity War? We just know that all those Asgardians have to go somewhere. And their newly crowned King Thor needs a kingdom. Whose ship is that? In the first of two post credit sequences, the Asgardian refugee ship is shown being confronted by a massive spaceship of unknown origin. We're never shown who's piloting it, but Marvel's Kevin Feige has dubbed the vessel the Sanctuary 2, which means it's most likely the flagship of Thanos, who's edging ever nearer to our heroes as the impending Infinity War is getting closer. Is Surtur dead? Surtur, a hellish monster prophesized to bring about the titular end of days, makes his debut in Thor Ragnarok, and sure enough, he does just that. The film ends with his ultimate destruction of Asgard, and with it, his apparent death. We can only assume he perished along with the realm along with Hela, the goddess of death, but we don't actually see anyone die. We only see them disappear. As Ragnarok is an event that functions cyclically, having happened before and almost definitely happening again someday, who can say for sure that Surtur is dead? Perhaps he's simply gone back to his realm to start the cycle over again. Will Thor get Mjolnir back? 
One of the more shocking moments in Thor Ragnarok comes in its first act, when Hela crushes Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, with her bare hand. It's a huge moment, as Mjolnir is thought to be indestructible. Perhaps even more surprising is the fact that he doesn't get Mjolnir back by the time the film is over. Admittedly, part of the character's arc is coming into his own as the rightful king of Asgard and the god of thunder. Mjolnir only helps him channel his powers, it isn't their source. Still, a Thor without a hammer seems somewhat naked, and we can't help but wonder if he'll be getting his favorite toy back. Every time I threw it, it would always come back to me. Mjolnir looked pretty busted after Hela had her way with it, but when dealing with Norse mythology and comic book characters, practicality isn't really a priority. Don't be surprised if these two find a way back together. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.